Hi guys, welcome to the tool truck. Today I'm in my garage. Just got done getting uh, my inventory ready for Monday. I was on a, a stream last night and one of the subjects came up is tool distributors drive by certain shops or have never stopped in there at all. So let's take a look at the reason why this might be and see if we can get to the bottom of it. So I've been a tool distributor for about 20 years. I've also been a mechanic. I was a mechanic for 13 years professionally and before that I just worked on a lot of stuff. Uh, it doesn't make me an expert. I've been on both sides of the coin so I can understand why a distributor might not come to your shop. Now I was with a franchisee and we used to have sales meetings and you would go to the sales meetings and you would buy tools. They would tell you how to sell tools and stuff like that but we would also talk among ourselves you know hey I have this bad shop blah 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 what should I do and these are some reasons, I got 10 of them here, that might be why guys stop coming to your shop. So let's go over them. Now, these are in no particular order. So the first one would be no or low sales. So let's face it, the tool guys are out there to sell tools, not just to stop in your shop and say hello. You have to understand that a tool truck has roughly eight hours to sell tools. And within that eight hour window, they have to get to as many shops in their area as they can. If they're coming into your shop and they're making no sales or a very low percentage of sales, it might not be best for them to keep coming to your shop. They might have to end up finding another shop close in their area again to sell tools at. A lot of this could just be, you know, guys in the shop already have a lot of tools. They've been in it for a long amount of time. There's, there's all types of reason why it's a, they just don't like that distributor. You know, three other tools trucks coming in there and these guys are already maxed out in those tool trucks. So there could be a reason why that tool truck is not coming by. It's just because of low sales or no sales. Let's, I mean, let's face it, we're in business to sell tools and to make money. As much as we would like to give them all away to you, it just doesn't work that way. All right, so let's talk about a tool truck that has never came to your shop. You see him drive by and he never stops. One of the reasons why that he drives by and he might never stop is because his time limit that we were just talking about, that eight hour window, is already full. Maybe he works right up to five o'clock, you know, as the guys are walking out the door and, you know, he's trying to do business, you know, at that shop. You never want to show up roughly a half hour before the shop closes. You want to get there at least an hour before the shop closes. With that being said, if his route is already full, he might not have time to add you in for that day or even that week. He might have a full set of set stops. So that could be another reason why your tool distributor never stopped at your shop. It doesn't mean you cannot meet him somewhere. You can always chase him down. I know it's a pain in the butt and you guys pay for the convenience of the tool truck coming to your shop. But like I said, if he doesn't have the time, it's, it makes it hard to stop. Number three would be rude customers. Uh, I've had this in my past where I've gone into shops. I say hello to a guy and I, you know, I open up my, my tote bag and I try to show him what I have to sell and they don't even say hello back. They don't even want to give you the time of day. It could be two reasons. One, they hate life. Two, they hate you. you. You just didn't, you know, connect. Or they're best friends with the other tool guy and they feel that you're, you know, taking business away from him. Whatever it might be. Rude customers, though, is a reason why a tool dealer might stop coming to your shop. Another reason why in, in the same category as rude customer could be the shop owner himself. The shop owner is saying, yeah, come into my shop but he's not really welcoming the distributor into his shop. He's just like, you know, every time the tool guy shows up, if the shop owner sees him, you know, he gives him a little bit of a hassle. Oh, the guy's real busy or make it quick or, you know, why do you have to come at this time? There's always something. When that happens, yes, the guy's letting you come into his shop, but, you know, the hassle of going in is not worth it find another shop somewhere where people want you to come in. So that could be a reason why a tool dealer stopped coming in. It, it might not even be you guys. It could just be the shop owner. 
I think we're on number four. Let's just say you guys are big online buyers and you like to go to the box store and buy your tools. When the tool distributor comes in, you're using him as your warranty dumping ground, meaning you're taking all the tools that you bought somewhere else and you're bringing them to him and you're handing them to him to warranty. That costs the distributor money. Most distributors will warranty any tools as long as you're buying some tools. It's kind of like a two-way street. But if you're not buying, why should he warranty your tools? Yes, it's bad business for him to say, no, I'm not going to warranty your tools. But you're not buying anyhow. So it really doesn't matter. So he might just say, you know what? I'm just going to stop going in there. I'll let them handle it somewhere else. Number five, this really applies more to franchisees trucks, the snap on the corner, well, the Mac, the Mac go guys. In their agreement, and list of call says you're allowed to go into shop A, B, C, D, okay? But shop E just opened up its brand new and it was never on your list of calls. He might not be able to stop to come see you. That could be a reason. Now, he can get that shop at it. He has to call his district manager. District manager has to, I think he has to go out and approve it. I'm not, I can't remember exactly how it's done. He might end up uh, getting it approved, then he can stop if he has time. Again, it falls back on that eight-hour window again. And if you guys are going to buy tools, if it's worth it to them. So a lot of dealers, they might not even try to come into your shop, just knowing that the hassle they have to go through to try to get it added. Now, let's just say they get it added. And meanwhile, this is an area in, in the country that's really growing. A lot of shops are starting to open up, and he's adding more shops. And, and he's doing good. He's hitting all these shops, and he's... He, he's like, he likes coming to see all you guys. And he's putting money out on the street. Well, then his franchise comes to him and says, hey, listen, between you and the guy next to you, the other distributor next to you, we can fit a new route in between. So we're going to take these new list of calls that we just gave you, these new shops, and we're going to put a new guy in right there. So now... You know, he has to negotiate trying to get his money out of it, or he might even lose some money. Who knows what can happen? But that could be a reason why he might not even try to come into a new shop. It could not even be the dis distributor's fault. It might be his franchise's fault, why he has not been into your shop. Okay, another reason why it could be time killers. The shop might be buying tools, but if it takes an hour or more to sell a $20 tool, and this happens week after week after week, the tool dealer might just say, you know what, this, this time that I'm wasting in that shop to try to sell this $20 tool, I could pick up a new shop down the road or spend more time in this other shop that has been buying more tools at, you know, at a quicker pace. The guy, when he goes in, the guys know what they want. It, that all falls back on that eight hour window time frame. This also goes for the dealer being a time killer because the dealer could go in and just hang out and just spend a lot of time in, in the shop. Well, shop owners, they don't want to see that. They don't, some shop owners, you know, it's okay that the, the tool guy comes in as long as he doesn't spend all day there or hours there. He wants them to come in, do business, give his guys what he, what they need to do their job better. And then out the door he goes. If a distributor is in there just hanging out and wasting time, he might be asked not to come back. So a reason why your, your distributor stopped coming into your shop could be because of the shop owner. The shop owner might have said, hey, listen, you're just you're wasting too much time. I can't have that. Ask them not to come back. So comment below. Do you have guys in your shop that just goes out to the truck to hide or just to hang out uh, to kill time? Let me know. I think we're on number seven, bad pay. You know, when a tool guy sells a tool to you, it should that tool should be paid off in roughly six to eight weeks. Some tool guys will stretch it out to 10 weeks depending on what it is and how much it is. But six to, six to eight weeks is, is a good amount. And if you buy tools, you know, three weeks in, that's why your payment should go up. Your payment should go up because it needs to cover the new tool. A lot of times the distributor will just say, no, just keep paying me the same amount. And just, he knows that you're going to pay and stretch out a longer amount of time. But you have guys, sometimes the tool dealer will say, hey, you know, you guys come out, you buy $100 worth of tools, but you're all bad pay. Um, you just, you don't pay your agreed amount. 
you take months to pay off a small balance. I've had guys even say to me, hey, if I don't pay you off, you'll come back. Uh, no, that's not true. If it's not that much money and I've already invested so much time and effort into getting my money back and stuff like that, I like to call it buying insurance. I'll write it off and I'll basically tell guys, I just bought insurance on you. I'm never selling you a tool again. I'm never warranting anything for you again. It's over. If you're gonna buy tools, make sure you do your agreed amount, your agreed payment amount. Now, we all know things come up, but just don't hide from your tool guy. Talk to him. And if it gets to the point where he's not collecting his money like he should be in that shop, he might decide not to come back. Reason number eight. This one's a tough one. The dealer has to make a hard decision on this one. It's, it's basically out of the way shops. It's basically time versus money. Now, most routes are set up. You hit one shop after another. You try not to backtrack. You know, um, you try not to go down the same roads that you went down before. You just, you keep moving forward. It saves on fuel. It saves on time. But you get a shop once in a while that's kind of off the beaten path. And it takes, you know, 15, 20 minutes to drive there. There's a couple guys there. Spends, you know, 15, 20 minutes and then, you know, 15, minute, 20 minutes drive back. So it could be up to 45 minutes to an hour at that one shop, taking up that time, that eight hour window that we talked about. So this is a tough one because if, if a new shop calls and says, yeah, here, this is where I'm at, and it is out of the way, the distributor has to make that decision. You know, the first thing he's gonna do is ask how many guys are there. If he says there's one guy there, he might not come. Two guys, maybe, three or four, there's probably a better chance of him coming to that shop. And if he doesn't get a good feel the first couple times he's out there, he might not come back just because, like I said, it's an hour of his time to see only, you know, three to four guys where if he doesn't spend that hour of time, he can spend it in another shop that might have the same amount or more guys and he can spend a little bit more time trying to sell to those guys. So that could be a reason why. That's, it's, that, that one's a tough one. Um, another reason why a distributor might stop coming to your shop is that he's retiring or he's going out of business. What happens there is, you know, distributors don't like to say, hey, um, I'm done after this time. They really don't want to advertise that. They would just like to start backing off, backing off and, you know, pulling their money off the street to make sure they get all paid back what they're owed. And what happens is guys pay off. And then the following week, the tool man don't show up anymore. And the week after that, he doesn't show up anymore. Why? Because he doesn't want to sell more tools to collect more money. He's trying to get out of business. Number 10 is high turnover shops. You know, you get shops where people just don't like to work there. You find out after being in the business for a while, you the, the tool distributor knows these shops. And you might end up being a really good customer of that distributor. And you end up going to that shop and the tool the distributor knows, man, he ain't going to like it there. He's going to end up leaving. But he doesn't want to go there because there's other guys there that might start buying tools also. He doesn't want to get in deep with a whole bunch of people. Just to find out each one leaves, it makes it hard to chase your money down. And then new guys come in. Meanwhile, he now he's stuck because he's got guys that are there that he has to keep coming and seeing. And he knows that sooner or later guys are going to be leaving. And it's just a high turnover shop. It, it's It's... It's just not a good situation. So the distributor might decide not to come to your shop. Guys, thanks for coming by. I'll talk to you later on. Have a great day.